this is going to be our last video for lesson one. Our next series of videos, lesson two, takes a look at the hardware that you find in a computer. But first, let's talk about what is a computer. There's, okay, if you remember before, I kind of warned you about you're trying to take, you're kind of taking a trip into geekdom and that even though you know the correct way to say things and you might have some information, you might not want to share it. This is one of those little moments, okay? You might heard of the PC. You might heard of computers being called the PC. Oh, I bought a PC. PC stands for personal computers. And I can almost guarantee you, you do not have a PC at home. The reason why I'm saying this is because PC is a trademark term. It actually belongs to IBM. IBM created the very first PC, and I mean PC from a trademark point of view, okay? Not the very first personal-ish computer, but they created the very first personal computer from a trademark point of view back in 1981. Everything else, the Dells, the HPs, all of these are technically known as something called PC clones. Again, I can guarantee you if you correct your friends and call it a PC clone, they're going to steal your lunch money. So just between us, PC is IBM only. PC clones is all the other computers running Windows, okay? So a little bit of history here. IBM created the standard back in 1981 when it shipped its very first PC. And there's a whole bunch of really cool information, by the way, as far as computer history, which there's a great video. It's kind of old now called Triumph of the Nerds. You can get it through Amazon. I think PBS might have a copy. You can download it from there or buy it from them. But it's definitely worth getting if you're interested in the early history of computers. The video ends pretty much when Steve Jobs left Apple. So again, it is pretty dated. The IBM standard back in 1901 continued to dominate and lock down what PCs were until about 1987 when, you might have heard of this company before, Compact became the king. Now, Compact's gone for the most part. HP bought them out years ago. But Compact used to be the big kid on the block when it came to PC clones. Today, pretty much any computer that you have, you know, Dell, whatever, is a PC. It's basically a Wintel standard. Wintel means it conforms to a Windows Intel standard, meaning you can have an Intel CPU. We'll talk about CPUs in lesson two. And you can run Windows on that computer. For the rest of us, again, we basically say it's a PC. We really don't split hairs here. And some of the technology you might run into out there as far as a personal computer or personal computer experience would be your desktop which is the, the computer usually sitting in one location. It might have a system unit on the floor or on the table. Now we have the all-in-ones, which is the monitor and the computer put together. We can have laptops. You can have tablets. Okay, We have handhelds, really your smartphone or mini computers. So these are all the different types of PCs, personal computing experiences you can have. Major manufacturers of com current computers right now are Lenovo, Toshiba, Acer, HP, Dell, Samsung. All these are well-known manufacturers. If you don't see a computer on there that you like, it might be because it was bought out by somebody else. So for example, if you like Alienware, Alienware was bought out by Dell. So it's no longer Alienware by themselves. So these are the major manufacturers of PCs. So how do apples fit in? I used to teach computer repair for four years back at a high school. Great program. But I was a PC person. Recently, I became an Apple fan. I've drunk the Kool-Aid, and I'm an Apple person. So are Apple's PCs, or are they not PCs? Apple's are Apple's. Macs are Macs. They're really not categorized as PCs, um, but we just pretty much call them PCs anyways. If it's a personal computer that you use as a personal computer, it's a PC. Uh, Apple's were not Wintel standard for quite some time. In fact, up until 2006, Apple's had their own CPU, their own processor. In 2006, they went on to the uh, Intel standard, which is why if you have an Apple, if you have an iMac, or if you have a MacBook Pro, you can dual boot. You can either boot into a uh, Mac OS, or you can boot into Windows. And we'll talk about booting and what operating systems are in other lessons. One of the questions I always get, though, 
is what computer should I get? What kind of computer should I buy? It really depends on what you're going to use it for. Are you going to use it for general school work? Are you going to use it for computer games? Are you going to use it for digital media? In other words, are you doing a lot of photo editing? Are you using video editing, web design? And um, how much money do you have to spend? I suggest for the majority of users out there who just need a computer to get schoolwork done, buy a Mac, buy an Apple product. And the reason why, I'm, by the way, I'm probably going to hate me all over this, religious wars have been fought over PCs and Macs, by the way. The reason why I say get a Mac is simply because you have less issues with viruses and malware. Now, Macs are not more secure than PCs. That's a myth, okay? Macs are not uh, super safe, secure computers when compared to PCs. The reason why Macs have less problems with viruses is simply the fact that most of your virus people, most of the bad guys out there, are making viruses to take down PCs. There are, according to some estimates, over 100,000 viruses written and released for PCs every week. That's a lot of viruses. So if you have a PC, you better have some good antivirus software. On a Mac, you know what? The bad guys don't care. They're not writing stuff for the Mac. And so even though a Mac usually has a higher cost of ownership right up front, the cost of ownership over a period of time I think is a little bit lower. This is my own personal opinion. Because you don't have to worry about the malware and stuff like that. So, again, I would recommend a Mac for most average users. Now, if you're going to be a computer gamer, you don't want a Mac. If you're a computer gamer, you want to go with the PC world. Because just like the bad guys aren't writing viruses for Macs, well, the game manufacturers aren't writing games for the Macs. They're writing them, the really good ones at least, for the PC market. And so if you're a computer gamer, you're going to want an expensive, more expensive computer you're going to want to make sure it has some great graphics capability, and you're probably going to want to go PC. Now, digital media, if you're going to do a lot of video editing, photo editing, things like that, you can go either way. Uh, if you could go PC, you can go Mac. They both work. Again, with a PC, the key is good video card. Make sure you're going to be spending a little bit more money on that one. The Macs pretty much come already able to handle that with the IMAX and the MacBook Pros. They're going to take care of you both ways. And it always comes down to how much do you have to spend. So that's my suggestion on what type of computer you should get. The components of a computer, and there are two general components of a computer. You have hardware, which is the topic of lesson two. And you have software, which is your operating system. So hardware are the pieces of the computer you can touch. The keyboards, the hard drive, the cases, etc., etc. Steve Wozniak the co-founder of Apple had a great quote which says, never trust the computer you can't throw out a window. Software is going to be the apps. It's going to be your operating system. You might be running Windows. You might be running Mac OS. You might be running Linux, what have you. Again, apps, applications, World of Warcraft, Microsoft Office, Chrome, Photoshop. These are different software things that you run on the computer. And we'll talk about all of this in more detail as we go through the lessons. So, if you want to learn more, and this is something I'm going to include in every lesson, at the end of every lesson, I want to give you three to five additional resources that you can go and look if you're interested. Uh, I already talked about Triumph for the Nerds, very good video. Lifehacker, go check them out. If you don't have them bookmarked, be sure to bookmark them. They're a great production, uh, personal production kind of help thing. They help hack your life, as it were. They've got good articles on technology, good articles on productivity those kind of things. ThinkGeek, uh, you can spend a lot of money at ThinkGeek. Uh, ThinkGeek is a great novelty website. They have a lot of geeky related items. So if you are into Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel, DC Comics, if you're into Doctor Who, if you're into any of these things, believe me, they've got stuff for you to spend a lot of money on. Uh, there's a great podcast out there. There's a webcaster out there named Leo Laporte. He does The Tech Guy really good consumer information as far as technology goes. And also because we've talked about digital literacy, there's an actual web government website called digitalliteracy.gov. Okay, that's going to conclude it for me for lesson one. I hope you enjoyed our first series of lessons. I always welcome feedback. And of course, I sent you or gave you information on where to find me online as far as social media goes. If you're watching me on YouTube, thank you very much. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you get updates on all future videos. 
If you like the videos, please share them with your friends. If you're an instructor, you have my permission to use them in class via YouTube. Until lesson two, have fun studying out there and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.